So good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's great that so many of you have been able to join us this afternoon and we've got participants from all over the UK and also um, all corners of the globe as well, which is really exciting. So a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Tori Coombs and I'm a former primary teacher and now the primary curriculum lead at Century. Now, Century, as you may already know, is a teaching and learning platform powered by artificial intelligence. We have full coverage of the English maths and science curriculum at Key Stage 2, and this also extends to Key Stage 3 and 4. We work with hundreds of schools in the UK, and we're also very excited to be working with uh, many schools across the globe as well, and we're now in 35 different countries, which is um, really fantastic. Um, I think it goes without saying that this year has really turned education on its side and schools all around the world have done a magnificent job in embracing new technologies and in ways of teaching remotely. Um, now with um, all my fingers crossed here, um, I hope that we can um, be re we hope, I hope that you can be reunited with your students in your schools in the near future. And with this in mind, the focus of this webinar is going to be on supporting teaching and learning as we move back into the classroom, hopefully with lockdowns firmly behind us. So we know that identifying and addressing lost learning and implementing a catch up plan will be key and technology can certainly play a significant role in helping to achieve this. So this afternoon, we're very lucky to be joined by some great speakers from the Discovery Trust and also Darlington College. So from the Discovery Trust, we have Joe Stowe, who leads on online learning across the whole trust. And Jo is based in Kibworth Primary School in Leicestershire, and she'll be talking about her experience of using technology to support school improvement. Also from the Discovery Trust, we have Sarah Lamble and Laura Riley, both year six teachers at Redlands Primary School, and they will be discussing how Century supports their students and offers intelligent insights into how their children learn. And finally, we'll be hearing from Wayne Hall, who is an EdTech demonstrator for Darlington College. And Wayne will be introducing the EdTech demonstrator program and talking about the support that's available to you as primary schools. Um, so we'll hear from all of our great speakers um, and then we'll have um, uh, opportunity for some questions at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Joe Stone. Okay, so it's uh, my great pleasure to be here as part of this event this afternoon. Um, my name, as you know, is Jo Stone and I'm an EdTech demonstrator for the DfE EdTech programme, as well as being the lead professional for um, Discovery um, Schools Trust. And I also am based at Kibworth Primary School as well. So today I'm going to talk about our experiences with technology at Kibworth Primary School and across our trust and also offer some tips and hints um, for other primary schools as well. So um, today, as you heard, Wayne Hall from Donington College, College is also going to talk about the demonstrator programme at the end of this session, but I just wanted to explain Kibworth's role in the programme briefly. Um, Kibworth is part of a 13 school mat called the Discovery Schools Trust in Leicestershire and as part of the programme we have offered school to school support um, across the country and our aim is to share ideas and good practice so that everyone can benefit and move forward on their digital journey. Uh, some examples of this support have been um, staff meetings, we've been able to support sharing policies and documents, we've, um, we, I'm always available for emails and phone calls, I've supported teachers um, in, small, in small groups, as well as LSAs, uh, leadership teams, and um, obviously demonstrate different apps and platforms out there at the moment that people can use. But we're always open to suggestions um, in terms of support that you might want. So Discovery Trust is a collaborative team of schools and um, we use technology 
now it's embedded throughout all of our schools and we have a team of technicians who support our, um, our staff which is led by Nathan Thurlby who you can see here. Nathan plays a huge part in the Tech Demonstrator programme too and he supports the schools with their technical queries. Our school staff support one another um, which in turn enables us to resolve and remove any barriers we have. We believe in the power of EdTech and in developing a culture of lifelong learning. A central team that you can see here and the EPI consult services that we use, but also our um, primary education team have fully embraced the digital journey and the trust is enabling all of our schools now to embed uh, this blended learning approach as well as a remote learning approach to our curriculum. So as a digital um, learning lead, my role this year has really um, grown very rapidly, as you can imagine, and um, I've been supporting schools in many of these different areas that you'll see listed here. I won't talk about all of them, but just a couple that I wanted to highlight. Um, the, one, the first one here about eliminating that digital divide with um, not only devices, but also uh, the lack of skills sometimes and the lack of knowledge, not through anybody's fault, but uh, with, you know, I'm supporting people that way to help to increase that knowledge. Um, another area that is really trying to improve on is the learning through collaboration and creativity and also that understanding um, the importance of personalised learning and how we can develop critical thinking skills for pupils. We're, lucky, we're very lucky to have passionate inspirational educators, I think, throughout the country at the moment with this whole process. Um, but as we know, EdTech is much bigger than just the laptops and it's much bigger than just remote learning. It's, 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 it's just a vast um, area that is very exciting as well. And it's about embedding these digital tools now into daily lessons purposefully and also utilizing the tools to enhance learning, such as examples here, 3D, learn, 3D printers, um, radio stations, drones, uh, because the, the but, you know, looking further ahead, the idea is to create sort of multimedia uh, workspaces in our schools rather than just having an IT suite now. Um, blended learning as well is something that we really want to embed in every classroom and to utilise it to its full potential. Um, and another really key thing that I've been doing is to sort of monitor that teaching and learning now in the context of remote learning, but also as a blended learning approach too. So uh, it's a, an interesting role that I've had and I've, I've, I'm very lucky to have this think at the moment. Um, technology um, here is being, obviously I'm looking at the school improvement all the time in this particular role too. We find that obviously technology can't be embedded without the schools having a really clear vision and a strategic pathway. Um, schools need to be making sure that every member of staff understands the difference between remote and blended learning now and the school curriculum will need to be reviewed constantly. Um, it needs to be a consistent a way forward with that curriculum. It needs to be well planned and obviously aligned with the delivery of the content. Uh, the digital strategy needs to intertwine with that uh, teaching and learning strategy because obviously tech, tech is a means to an end and it's a tool for education, but this tool has now become something that supports and improves every aspect of teaching and learning. So we've really had to make sure that we've considered how to embed it into all our policies and strategies now moving forward. Obviously, see, you can see here as well that infrastructure, safeguarding, communication, monitoring all underpin this process too. And um, we really have to make sure that we're looking at the capacity and capability of our staff um, and making sure that we're also offering good CPD and, um, and it, you know, it's constantly there um, for them to access. As a, tr as a trust, we're using um, Microsoft Teams as our main platform alongside Office, Office 365, but obviously there's a great, uh, other great uh, platforms you can use out there. We've um, chosen to use this one and we've empowered all of our staff with the knowledge and the know-how to use Microsoft Teams alongside Office 365. We find it's a real, it's a, it really is a one-stop shop because it allows you to use the platforms and apps within it and alongside it. And it encourages communication and collaboration for everyone within that school community. And it's engaging um, and it allows the use of gamification too. Obviously, we've mentioned that we're using other apps and platforms alongside um, of uh, Microsoft Teams to create that engagement and that variety for children. 
Alongside that, obviously, we do check the platforms. Um, we check their privacy protocols before we use them. We make sure they're safe. Obviously, safeguarding runs through our, all of this now. And um, many of the apps are well worth investigating. There are, um, are some great books out there that you can read and um, you know inform yourselves a, a bit more about um, these different platforms. Uh, you can see some here. I won't uh, read them out to you. Obviously, you can see Flipgrid, Padlet, Tapestry, Spelling Shared. But obviously, whilst we're uh, while we're here today, whilst we're here today, it's we're talking about Century Tech, and we use Century Tech throughout all of our schools in the trust now. Um, We've been using it for many years now and it creates a personalized learning approach for the children. The data that it collates allows children to access the correct learning pathway for their ability. It's, it's efficient, it's a safe learning platform and it supports learning but also teaches um, and allows teachers sorry, to um, access assessment and close the gap with those children that are using it. Um, so some hints and tips that I'm just going to mention right now. Um, I've already mentioned that it's important to have that strategic plan and vision, but really over a three to five year period, it's worth looking ahead and really planning ahead to make sure that you know where you're going um, with this approach now. Choosing a learning platform that allows you to monitor your school's data and, um, and where it's stored. Again, thinking about GDPR and also thinking about what um, tracking software you can purchase. Um, another key point to mention is when you've got your platform, making sure that that whole school approach to it, that whole structure that you're using is easy for parents and children to navigate and so that it's user friendly. And also it's then consistent across your school um, year on year for the children to use. The other thing as well that we've embedded across the trust is having um, a, a colleague in school that is called a blended learning champion, somebody who inspires the rest of the staff, who's passionate about IT, who's passionate about, about blended learning and putting it into place and who will support uh, other members of staff and inspire them during staff meetings and inset days to move forward with, with this approach. That's, that's a, a really top tip that's worked very well. And obviously really engaging children and parents alongside with some form of training and structure that helps to um, support them along the way too. My final tips um, would be moving forward really now is when we're back at school um, to really think about how um, it will go from remote learning to blended learning now and these are some really exciting things that we can be using in schools as you can see here some really ones that I, I've actually highlighted a little bit darker you can see personalized learning will come into its own catch-up lessons online clubs pupil parliaments and school councils can be created and shared sharing lessons between um, year groups or across schools even and uh, so that you can then create release time for teachers and teachers can then go and support and, and take intervention groups rather than always, well not always, but you know, just asking for support from LSAs as well. Um, obviously, you know, it's good to have both um, of those colleagues having the input there for intervention. Um, children connecting with other children across different schools, even in different countries, utilising Skype classroom, all of these things, you know, moving forward now will be really key things to think about. Um, with this approach. I think the last few tips, really be flexible with this. Have Make sure you're, you've got a change mindset and you're open to this change. Um, don't aim for, for, for perfection. Um, just aim for a constant improvement because that's what we are. We are lifelong learners, as I mentioned before. And I think that, you know, that's a, that's a key thing to take away from this today as well. Embed technology throughout lessons. Um, make sure you're reading around that subject area and, and, and keep learning, keep yourself up to date. Um, as a Microsoft user, as a Microsoft user, um, we as a, as a trust, we use a, a Microsoft Education Center. The courses there are free. So again, if, you know, if you're wanting to know more, that's a great place to go. And me experts, you know, you become Microsoft innovative educators through the Microsoft um, website as well, which is what a lot of our staff are doing now and are really enjoying it. So thank you for that, Tori, and I'll stop sharing there. 
thanks so much, Joe. That was really interesting uh, to hear, especially your top tips at the end there about um, being flexible. I imagine that is definitely something that you've had to be um, this year. Um, and I'm just, um, obviously you've had to adapt your strategy a lot this year to deal with rem teaching remotely, but I'm just wondering how um, this and your experience of using technology this year um, has um, impacted your digital strategy for the long term? Yeah, I would say um, it's not it's not impacted. I suppose it's made it's heightened it more than anything, and it's it's made us very aware that we need to you know um, constantly review it, constantly go back to it, and readdress different things, look at different areas. We've um, made sure that we've really focused on that blended learning, as I said before, and we've intertwined that into our teaching and learning strategy now. So it's it's within every element of that. Um, we've also looked at technology in the classroom. So we're making sure that we're, you know, we're looking at what's there when people go back into class. Have we got the right equipment? Have we got the right tools in the classroom? We're looking um, constantly at the curriculum planning too. Again, obviously that's going to really evolve and is evolving all the time. So we've really had to focus on looking at that. Um, and the capability of staff, as I mentioned, to making sure that we've looked at we're offering enough CPD um, so that staff feel um, upskilled and capable of, of going on this journey and making sure that our term action plans are reflecting what we're doing all the time. Oh, thank you. Julia. I think, yeah, definitely, as you said there, CPD um, is a, definitely a key one. So thank you for that. What we'll do now is move over um, to hear from Laura and Sarah. Thank you, Tori. I'll let Laura share the screen. Hopefully you can see it. Yes, we can. <laughs> okay, so as Tori said, we're both teachers at Salby Redlands. I'm the maths lead and Laura's the English lead. And we're gonna kind of talk about how we use Century in class as teachers. So starting off thinking about when we use it, obviously we all know our curriculums are jam-packed and um, sometimes when you're given new things to do, you're kind of like, how can we fit them in? But Century is really easy to fit into your timetable and really easy to kind of integrate into your learning. So we use it currently, well, kind of currently, obviously we're at blending at the moment, some children in school, some children at home, but we do a 30 minute weekly session with the whole class. So the whole class will have a set assignment focusing on an area of need. Um, we also were using it and we'll use it again when we come back to school for an after school catch up club. So I ran a maths club, Laura ran an English club and we would set um, buckets through those or um, we actually did two maths clubs because that was the need of our children. We use it within assembly times as an intervention option. Children have homework on it every week um, and we've been using it a lot for our home learning during lockdown. So we've set science nuggets through it where we maybe would have if we were in school have done um, an experiment using electricity obviously they won't necessarily have the batteries and all of those things at home so we've done it through century instead and it's provided those lessons for the children which um, they can do at home that we wouldn't be able to offer otherwise so what is it and i think we'll go through a lot of this in a bit more detail as we go through the slides and um, the thing that our children love and that we love as teachers is that it's a personalized path for every child so the learning they are given is the learning that they need so children do diagnostics and then that path is sort of geared towards their needs it covers all well it covers key areas of the curriculum so we use it predominantly for maths because that is the need of our children this year and has been for the last few years but we've also um used use it for grammar we've done it for reading and i think we're using it a lot more for science now particularly as children are at home um to deliver that science curriculum the, within Century, there are nuggets that cover different topics and each nugget's quite small in the sense that it will cover one area. So this week we looked at area and perimeter and it was just for compound shapes or it might just be for area of rectangles. So they're very small areas of the curriculum that can, children can really focus on. There are diagnostics, which are fantastic, and they are like baseline assessments or end of unit assessments, which the children complete and then um, Century will set a path based on their outcomes from that, set, that assessment and assignments are what we use a lot to set homework to set tasks for children and we'll show you those in a bit more detail as well this is lila hopefully the video worked and you can hear lila explain a little bit about how she uses sentry and what it looks like 
Okay, so what can you tell us about the century then? Here are all your nuggets that you'll need to work on because of in the previous times. I have started some, um, yeah. So um, you've also got all your topics that you can work on, which I've got English, mathematics and science. So here is where all your homework goes. So these are my new assignments at the time. And also the question of the day. They're all different questions. And if you need to have... Um, no, if you know what you need work on, you can go through here and see about all the nuggets and try and find what you need work on. So there's Lila just kind of giving you a little overview of what Sentry looks like for the children and how they can access it. So we use assignments a lot um, and we found it a really easy way for the children to know what they need to complete, when they need to complete it by. And it's really nice for teachers as well to get the data from that. So as you can see, an example on the right hand side there of what the children get on their screen for a few assignments. So um, whether it's for the maths club, whether it's for their homework, the date that it's due on, um, they're really easy to set. Um, as teachers, obviously, we know we have a lot of work to do and time is precious, so they are really easy to set. It's easy to see who has and hasn't completed them. You can combine them. So our homework's always one English task and one maths task at the moment just to cover both areas and it's also fantastic for differentiation and we will talk a little bit more about differentiation as we go through the slides so there you can see clearly the date where it's due on the right hand side and this is a shima Riley. <laughs> no this well these are just um some assignments that we've set in the past and you can just see how we can um how we've named them and things like that but yes yeah. Just another tool of the assignments. So yeah, and this is oh God. <laughs> We're not in the same room this time. <laughs> um, you can see that you can assign assignments to different groups. So it might be that you assign it to the whole class. It might be that you assign it to a particular group. Something we've done during this lockdown is create something called a secret club. And that's for our SEN children. And we very much direct them to nuggets maybe from year three or year four rather than year six. And if they're struggling in a live lesson or if their parents are struggling to engage them with the learning or even support them with their learning, they've got um, learning set at their level on the same topic but that they can maybe access independently with the videos that Sentry provide rather than maybe struggling to engage with a full one hour live lesson at home, which a lot of our Sentry children have been doing. You can also filter these are new features. Oh, sorry, that um, Sentry helped us out last year and put in when we requested sort of that we were struggling to see which assignments we'd set, and um, you can filter them by the date, you can filter them by the classes, and that was a really nice extra tool that Sentry put in last year to make it easier to look at the assignments. Perfect. So differentiation using Sentry. Now we know that obviously um, through being at home that children um, have developed gaps or areas that they need more support with, or it. Could they're just not learning at the same rate as everyone else. Um, so differentiation is a really good tool that Century provides. So it's an option for a class or student. Um, so you can when you go to assign your um, when you go to assign your nuggets and assignments, um, you can set that for a class or for specific students. And like Sarah was saying, um, we've set that for our send children, we've differentiated our learning classes so they're able to able access differentiated learning and needs. The great thing about differentiation in Century is that it's discrete. So nobody else will know um, that somebody sat next to them is doing completely different learning to what they're doing. Um, it's completely discrete. They have their own device and they can access whatever nuggets have been set um, by the teachers. It's personalised learning groups and children. So if you want a specific you know a specific set of children have struggled with area and perimeter it could be that you set an assignment which consolidates and supports their understanding of them hope that they will um get that for the next lesson um we've also been using different for homework as well so you can obviously set different assignments for people um homework so these people yeah at at school might need something slightly different for their homework at home because we know that they might not feel as confident to access that independently at home so one of the key things that we find Century is fantastic for is 
um, differentiation discreetly. Okay, another thing um, is the data we get from um, the assignments and the learning that children complete on se uh, Century. And you can see some examples on the right hand side of when we've set um, a nugget on verbs and it's quite clear to see um, who's really grasped verbs and who might need a little bit more support. So the assessment for learning is great to monitor the progress of children, you need to assess their understanding um, of concepts, so in grammar, in maths, in English, or even in science, it's support. So you, I can identify straight away um, using the um, data that's available that there are two children specifically that are needing a lot more support with verbs. So that can be done instantly. As soon as they've completed that nugget and you've seen that their scores are amber or yellow, you can support them straight away in that understanding and hopefully um, iron out any. Um, problems or misunderstandings that the children may have. So, well, it's instant results for the children. So the children will see it as soon as they finish then get um, how they've done on it. So whether they got 100, whether they got 57, um, and it's completely instant. So it's nice for the children to get their own uh, reassurance that yes, they've done really well, or maybe I need a little bit more support and help with this. The best things about it is that it's no marking and we're all extremely busy, I know at the minute, um, but the results are instant, so it's marked for you. Um, so you get that data and results instantly. The data and analysis is invaluable, and I know we'll talk more about that um, coming up. And it informs future teaching and further support. We can see that five children probably weren't scoring, well, weren't scoring green, so we can put things in place to hopefully um, address those. So I've already mentioned diagnostics once and um, they're really useful to use we use them a lot either generally at the end of a unit I know some schools use them at the start of a unit but we tend to use them at the end of the unit to assess whether a child has grasped that understanding so I know when children come back to school whenever that will be I will look at setting diagnostics on the things that we have taught during lockdown so air in perimeter we've been focusing on angles and shapes those sorts of things if I set the diagnostics I can see which of those children have grasped what we've taught them at home and which of those will then need further support and intervention. It also, the outcomes from those diagnostics help to guide the learners on their own paths. So they might have got one question wrong, but then that will create a nugget for them to focus on and to support them understand that further. It's great as a teacher, again, it's all marked, so you get all the data and you can look specifically at where the needs are for your specific children or your class. And you can break it right down to the actual answers that children have given, which is really helpful as well as a teacher. So there's an example of kind of a diagnostic outcome um, for uh, number and place value. So we can see here that Roman numerals, well, we haven't covered it. Yes, we've covered year six um, number and place value, but they don't come up into year six. They should have learned those in previous year groups. We can see ours clearly didn't learn it in previous year groups or don't remember it. So we know that at some point we can have a little look at Roman numerals and revisit that learning. Um, and that's just clear from here. It also kind of picks out individual errors on individual questions where you may want to look more closely on, you know, the child who scored the highest actually got that question wrong, whereas a lot of other children didn't. Or why did that child get one on the left wrong when most of the children got it right? So you can break it right down to individual questions for individual children. So here's an example of the data you can get from that. So you can click on that question, find out what the question was and look at the answer that they got. And you can see here, what's the largest number you can make with those digits? Well, actually, the child understands what they're doing but they've just missed the digit out, they've missed the digit four out. So when I'd look at that, I wouldn't be concerned necessarily about that child's understanding. They clearly just made a typing error or misread the question. So they do understand the maths behind the question. Whereas on this example, when we're looking at multiplying by 10 and 100 and 1,000, when we look at the child's answers here, they clearly have no understanding of what they should be doing. And that child needs some serious support in that area of maths. Perfect. So, um, like I've been saying earlier, the data you get from um, children completing nuggets is really, really invaluable. Um, so, it, the kind of data that you get um, is the time spent on each question. And as you can see on this example, um, on the first question, they spent one minute, 20 seconds. But as we go down, it's four seconds or two seconds. So, we can really assess whether the child has um, rushed it 
and not got a, a proper understanding um, or whether they're generally finding it quite tricky um, with their understanding of verbs. It tells you the type of question that each uh, question poses, so whether it's an exact verb or a verb or it's an exact, choice or an exact answer. It tells you how long they spent on the videos and the PowerPoint. So another great feature of um, Century is the videos that accompany the nuggets and the remember cards that accompany the nuggets. Those prompts and reminders to children who might be finding it tricky or may need a refresher before completing it. It also um, tells you whether they skipped the answers, whether they're incorrect or correct. So you can see this child skipped four questions. So we need to be thinking about whether they rushed to finish it or whether um, whether they just didn't have a clue. Uh, but we can see that they've got two correct. We can see one incorrect at the top. It also tells you how many attempts, and we should see that obviously over time, the more attempts that the child has, um, we should be seeing that graph um, gradually increase. But yes, the data we receive is fantastic. So obviously then you can break down the questions like Sarah just said, and here we can see that, in fact, they have um, correctly identified the correct verb, but grammatically they've chosen the incorrect verb because they've got the one with a capital letter rather than without the capital letter. So it could be a case of, yes, they understand what a verb is, yes, they understand the correct verb, but they've just made a slight error in their understanding of capital letters. But yes, the data is fantastic. Um, it's also really easy to organise. So you can see here that we can have different groups for different purposes. So you can see along the top there, we've got a, we've got a whole year six class, obviously, We've got my class and Mrs. Lambel's class, and then I set up a group um, for my maths club that I was running in the autumn term. So it's easy for you to customise the groups, add children, set assignments specific to these groups. It's really easy to monitor the progress, target your support. Um, that support could be whole year group or it could be individually. And obviously we can set things for individual classes. So something my class might be struggling with might be something completely different to what Sarah's is struggling with. And, and it gives you that option to differentiate and um, choose different assignments and nuggets for different classes. And you can see here for my maths club, um, just an, another example of the data that you can get um, with Century. And we've just got the view of Lila again. Lovely Lila. And um, to tell us um, about why she enjoys using Century. So, what do you use Century for? I use it for my homework, maths and grammar, and revision. Which so I can um, access it at home, which means that I can go back to the class and already know what we're going to learn. Perfect. Do you find Century useful? Of course, I find Century useful because um, obviously the point. Of also in life, we had to do our maths onto Sentry, so it was hard. But I, I find the videos useful because I learnt short division, the bus stop method, from Sentry's videos. Perfect. And what do you personally like about Sentry? I, I personally like is you have your Sentry for the rest of your life, so you can do your GCSEs and also have Sentry with you here and also just because it helps you learn and just a lot better than having nothing. Okay, do you want to show us Century on your um, iPad? Yes. Shall we move on from this because we've kind of shown it already? Yeah. yeah. And then yeah, just a few other views from children at school who um, just say they really like Century because you don't necessarily know what you don't know. Um, but the diagnostics help them to learn things that they don't didn't know they didn't know. You know, we don't know we don't know something until we get told that. Um, they like the fact that past personalised to them and that it's not timed. So they talked about the fact that TTRS and spelling shed is timed, whereas there's no pressure in Century to complete questions in a set time. I think that's everything from us, Story. It is. Brilliant. Thank you so much to both of you. And also thank you to Lila as well. That was really lovely to hear what she had to say about Century as well. Um, just um, a little question um, for you. Um, just as we, um, you know, fingers crossed, move back into the classroom in the not um, too distant future, just wondering um, how you'll use Century when you're back to address the lost learning. So I think we'll use the diagnostic to look at those areas that we've taught during lockdown 
to see which children have engaged with it and secured it at home and which children haven't and need that additional support in class then we can obviously use the nuggets within century um, in intervention time assembly time to help fill those gaps from home learning Yes, we'll also use them for intervention. So obviously we, we know that children are going to come back to school with gaps in their learning. So using Sentry um, during those intervention times to address those gaps, we will definitely be using. Um, we did some after school clubs in the autumn term, which I'm sure will be coming back um, as well as we enter this spring and summer term. So we will be using them there as well. Brilliant. Well, thank you um, again very much to both of you. And now we'll hand over to Wayne to hear a little bit more about the EdTech Demonstrator Programme. Thank you. Just bring up my presentation. Okay, thank you very much. I'll tell you what's been really great listening to Joe and Laura and Sarah about their, their journey with Century, but not only Century, but also their journey with educational technology. And uh, they really are a good demonstration of what the EdTech Demonstrator Schools and Colleges program is, is all about. And if you're not familiar with the program, it, it's made up of 50 schools and colleges, well, almost 50 schools and colleges across the UK, across, across, sorry, across England. And uh, we support schools with the development in their educational technology. Now, this was actually planned well before COVID. So these, this, this plan was due to start actually January last year. And then COVID came around, which meant that the focus changed to from general uh, digital technology to using more around the, the VLEs, so Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, and Seesaw, Purple Mash, and all of those. And all of the schools, as we've seen uh, with, with Joe's school, for instance, they've got some support that they can, they can give to, um, to, to the schools that they're working with. Now, it's free. It is absolutely totally free. Any school that signs up, um, they're not committing to anything. A lot of the schools that we're working with from, from, from Darlington, we're, they're using us as a, as a critical friend. Uh, some of the schools we've worked up, we, we've uh, got signed up with, we've actually spent five or six weeks doing some really in-depth CPD with their staff. So it really is up to you how involved you think your school needs to be and how much you want to, us to be involved. There's no set plan. Everything's built around um, your, your requirements for your school because no two settings are exactly the same. So we can't do a, a one size fits all. But we do tend to be falling into the same types of VLEs that we're supporting. So it is around Teams and Google Classroom and, and Seesaw, for instance, which at the start of the, uh, the lockdown, I, I didn't know what Seesaw was, but now I'm a, a Seesaw ambassador. So I've, I've worked my way through uh, their, their, uh, their training packages. So now we can help other schools and colleges, well, other schools, sorry, with the use of Seesaw. And as Joe's already mentioned, the support that we deliver is very much tailored to you but we do try and build a community. So it's about that group support. So lots of webinars, it's pretty similar to what we're listening to, to uh, what we're involved in now. And then lots of peer-to-peer peer, peer -peer, um, support and discussion. So we'll often join schools up that have similar problems or have found a similar solution to a problem. So we'll work to get those together. Then we'll work around digital safety and uh, safeguarding and offer guidance around those areas. We'll look at uh, accessibility and how you provision your platform for send learners. And then we also have a look at not just your well-being, but also the learner's well-being by thinking about what it is like to be learning online, because it's very, very different to being in the classroom. The floor of a classroom is very different to the floor of learning online when you're sat in your kitchen or your living room, your dining room, wherever. And we also have access, because we are a, a large organisation now with um, a, a number of schools that are, that are involved in the EdTech Demonstrator project directly, but then also we've got approaching 5,000 schools that we've been involved in nationally. And then beyond that, we've touched with another, uh, uh, well, almost up to 11,000 schools have accessed either our webinars or our resources, or they've come along to events and the like. So... That means that we have a, a lot of, I wouldn't say buying power, but we do have a little bit of influence around getting some tools cheap or discounted. So that's one of the things that we, we've managed to uh, be able to roll out to those partner schools 
uh, where organizations have been willing to give us those tools for free, either forever or for a, um, a limited period of time, normally to the end of this academic year. So that's been working well. Now, as Jo mentioned, she's, she's got a team behind her that, that helps with her school, uh, her schools, sorry. And the, all of the EdTech demonstrators are exactly the same. There's not one single person running a, an EdTech demonstrator all on their own. They've got a team of support behind them. Now, we've all got um, either a Microsoft or a Google certification. We've all got some sort of qualification around um, delivering online learning and the like as well. So you know that what you're getting is people who've actually done the job. So Josh, for instance, down there in the bottom left, he's an English teacher. Dari up in the top right, she works with children with special needs. Uh, Amy down in the bottom, bottom right, uh, she, she's a specialist with creating digital, tech, digital tools. So we have those skills amongst us to be able to fit that for what your needs are. Now, when it comes to your deciding which platform's best for you, you've probably already chosen one and you've already gone down either a Microsoft route or a Google route or a Seesaw route or whatever. And it can be a bit of a minefield wondering which one to go to and a bit of a maze. But the thing to remember is that there's no such thing as a wrong decision. All you've had to have done is made that decision because once you've made that decision to use your platform, the support is then there to help you to get the most from it. And that might be that uh, we, yeah, we come in and we deliver training on your platform, or it might be that, you, you as I say, mentioned earlier, that it is just a one-to-one, -one, an hour's conversation to make sure that you're doing things, doing things right, or, or what we've seen other schools and colleges doing. So regardless of that, what should your VLE be doing? Well, Joe mentioned about how important it is to build a community. And that's one of the first things that you should be thinking about when you invest in your VLE, no matter which one it is. Does it have that ability to build a community for your learners? Does it have that ability to bring the learners together in a space for discussion? And that's even before you start thinking about your pedagogy and your subject knowledge and what, how are you going to, 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 to teach your children? You need to think about what it is that you're going to do to get the learners involved and engaged. Then after that, what is it that the tool brings that makes your life easier for both staff and the students? So does it have marking tools? Does it have assessing tools? Does it reduce the workload? Now, we've seen what Century does. You know, we've just seen Laura and Sarah talk there about how uh, the workflow within Century really does reduce that workload. Can you imagine marking all of those papers for all of those individual pupils before they employed Century? Then within your VLE, does it provide a collaborative space? So does it engage in group activities? Because the more we can engage learners in joint activities, the, build, the better their communication skills are going to become over time. So we need to build those group activities into that. And your platform's got to be able to, to do that. And then the final two things is allowing uh, portfolio building. So what evidence does your platform build that you can then show awarding bodies or that you can show to Wofsted when they through, walk through the door? How is it that you can measure their progress? So that assessment for learning. And then finally, does it provide training certification? It's very important to make sure that your staff are being upskilled during all of this process, that nobody's being left behind, but not only your staff, but your, your pupils as well, and to some degree, the parents. Parents are very important in this. They're supporting a lot of children uh, children during this time so you need to get them on board as well and all of the platforms do offer some provide uh, some measure of training and certification and then that recognizes the skills and the knowledge that your staff have gained during this time so all i would say is if you haven't started already start now the schools that we got involved with back in uh, February, March time are so much further down the road than a lot of schools that we're working with now. I'm still coming on, to, coming into contact with schools now who are just dipping their feet into virtual learning. Some of them have still been sending paper packs home to their learners. Now, bearing in mind that we've been in this lockdown for 10 months coming up, I think it is, that's a long time to have been thinking it'll get better tomorrow. So really, you need to be making that start now. 
So ideally, what I would ask is, and I'll drop the link back into the, the chat in a second, is if you want to get in touch with us, then you need to be going to the EdTech Demonstrator uh, website in the first instance. And on there, there's an option for, um, I think it's called um, request support. And I'll drop that link into the chat. But today you've heard from uh, Laura and Sarah, but also Joe, who runs uh, the EdTech Demonstrator um, provision out of the Discovery Schools Trust. And also you've heard from me, Wayne, and our two email addresses are on the, uh, the screen there. But then also we have a very active Twitter uh, profile as well. So if you are on Twitter, you can reach out to us through the EdTech demo hashtag, and we will be able to get back into you in uh, that. Uh, that's a central hashtag that all of the 50 schools and colleges are uh, in some way linked into. Excellent. Thank you so much, Wayne. That was really interesting um, to hear all about um, the EdTech um, Demonstrator project. We have had a couple of questions that have come in um, on the project. I just wondered if you could answer these for us. Um, one question was, how long will um, the project uh, be extended for? We don't know yet. Up, it, we, we, up until yesterday, we thought that the project was going to be finished by the end of March. It was financed for one financial year rather than an academic year, which is bizarre in the world of education. However, um, we found out uh, towards the end of last week that it may be getting extended, but we don't quite know what it's going to look like yet. I, I can't see it being less than another year. Okay, excellent. Um, thanks, Wayne. And just uh, one more quick question as well. Um, somebody was asking, can they pick um, which um, ed tech school um, they'd like to um, find out more about so that they can find the school that uh, meets uh, their needs? Yes, they can. When you go onto the site and you select um, uh, for support, there's a form for you to fill in. And then there's a drop down menu of all of the 48 schools that you can choose from and you, you would select which one you want to work with. So in most cases, you would want to work with one that's local to you because they would understand your, your surroundings, they'd understand your catchment. Excellent, thank you so much, Wayne. So just um, moving on to answer a couple of your questions that have come, come through. Um, one of them was, does Century have audio for children who are lower ability readers? And does it work well with Key Stage 1 or predominantly Key Stage 2? So it is a Key Stage 2 platform. Um, although worth bearing in mind that our Year 3 course does obviously contain prerequisites from Key Stage 1, as we know that there are um, definitely a lot of Year 3 students who will still have gaps. So we do have some Key Stage 1 content, but we are um, aiming at students in Year um, three and above. And um, on, you know, does Century have audio? Um, yes, we do. We've all of our learning material um, has a video format so the students can watch the video. And also, um, if you want to use any additional read aloud software, um, such as a Google extension, um, then that works well with Century. Um, and then one other question um, are we looking to develop? Um, any of the non-core subjects or key stage one at any time. Um, I think we're definitely very interested in doing that, um, but for now our main focus is just English, maths and science. Um, what I'm going to do um, now is just um, bring up um, our, uh, a slide with our partnership managers on them. So if you do want to find out any more about Century, you can get in contact um, with them. Um, they, are, they work with um, different regions of the UK. So if you're based up in the North, you can contact Deborah. If you're in the Midlands, you can contact Paul. In the South, it's Matthew. Or if you're an international school, you can get in contact with Kira. Um, they'd love to tell you more about Century um, and give you a demonstration. So if you do want to find out more, don't hesitate to get in contact um, with them. Um, so just um, to finish off then, I'd just like to say another really big thank you um, to all of our speakers for uh, today. And um, also a big thank you 
um, for all of you for joining. It's so great to have so many of you um, from all um, corners of the globe. So thank you all very much. <laughs>